This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Okay, this is the second of uh, two lectures, the second and last of two lectures on investment appraisal. Uh, and in the first lecture, we w I went through um, net present value and internal rate of return, which are the two most important uh, methods uh, you need for the exam. Uh, in this lecture, uh, I'll go through um, a slightly different approach, uh, which is the payback period. Uh, and what the payback period is, the definition of it, it's the number of years It takes, in cash terms, to get back the initial investment. Now, I'll show you with example, obviously, in a second. Uh, but the real relevance of it is, I did say, rather... Quickly, I admit, but in the previous lecture, the net present value uh, approach is fine, but all the cash flows we're using have to be estimates. We haven't even bought the machine yet, so obviously we just estimated what the net cash will be each year. Uh, and if our estimates are wrong, then we could end up accepting a machine that perhaps turns out not to be very good. Now, when you're doing estimates, I'm sure you'd agree with me, you might be reasonably confident of your estimate in the first year, but the further into the future you're estimating, the more it ends up becoming not much more than a guess. And so, as you'll see what the payback period does, we see how many years it's going to take to get back uh, our money, and if we can get back the money very quickly, we're going to be pretty confident we'll get our money back. But on the other hand, if it's going to take us 20 years to get the money back, well, given their estimates, I think I'd be very scared as to whether we ever will get the money back. Anyway, let's look at the example and see how it actually works. The number of years it takes to get back the original investment. And look at example three. A new project will cost us 100,000. It's going to last, we think, five years with no scrap value. And we expect it to generate operating cash flows as follows. And remember, the operating cash flows, it's your cash receipts, the sales, less all the cash expenses. It's like the profit each year, but in cash terms. Uh, and we expect to get 20,000 the first year, 30 in the third, 40 in the uh, third, and so on. Well, I want to know how many years will it take to get back that 100 that we've spent. After one year, how much have we got back? 20,000. Well, that's not enough. We need another 80. So how much have we got back after two years? Well, two years, we get another 30. So we've now had a total of 50. Uh, but it's still not enough. I want to know how many years to get back the original 100. Uh, three, uh, after three years, we get back another 40. So we've now had a total of 90. We're nearly there, but we've still not got back the full 100. In the fourth year, we get 50. Ah, so we've now had 140. We've now got back more than the 100. And so certainly it pays for itself in less than four years. It's more than three, but less than four. Uh, well, in the exam, they'd expect you to be more precise and to assume that the money we're getting each year we're getting in evenly throughout the year. So how long is it going to take? Well, again, after three years, we've had back 90, and we need another 10. 
uh, to get the full 100. The fourth year gives us 50. Well, if that 50 is received evenly throughout the fourth year, surely to get the extra 10 we need to get 100, we need an extra 10,000. Uh, well, if the fourth year gives us 50,000, 10,000 will be 10 fiftieths of the fourth year, which is what 10 fiftieths is 0 0.2. It will be 3.2 years. So that's how long it looks as though it's going to take to get the money back. And as I said earlier, the shorter that is, the better. Uh, because the further into the future you're estimating, the more uncertain you're going to be. And I know I said it earlier, but if this one was going to take 10 years to get the money back, I'd be frightened that we might never get the money back because my estimate for, for 10 years' time is, will be little more than a guess. So that's payback period. Now, the only thing is that the straight payback period is ignoring all this interest business. And that, um, you know, the, the later you get the money, there's more interest cost. And so perhaps to make it slightly better, point part B wants the discounted payback period. And so if you do get a question on this, check very carefully. Does it just ask for the payback period? And if it does, it's 3.2 years. Uh, if, on the other hand, they ask for the discounted payback period, well, it's exactly the same idea, except we do it on the discounted cash flows. And so let's discount them. The flows are 20,000 in the first year, 30 in the second, 40 in the third, 50 in the fourth, uh, and 30 in the fifth. Uh, the cost of capital is 10%. So multiply by the discount factors at 10% to get the present values. Uh, and and from the present value tables, the discount factors for one year, 0 0.909, for two years, 0 0.826, 751, 683, 621. It's a straight discounting. I think we've done enough of that by now. And so the present values, uh, 20 times 0 0.909, 18,180. 30 times 0 0.826, 24,780. 40 times 0 0.751, 30,040. 50 times 0 0.683, 34,150. And finally, have I got the right figure? 30, yeah, 30 times 0 0.621. 18,630. We do exactly the same as before, but on these present values, the discounted amounts. And so how much have we got? After one year, we've had 18,180. We need 100,000, so we're obviously way off. The second year, we get an extra 24,780, so 18,180 plus 24,780, we've now got a total of 42,960. Still not enough, we need 100. In the third year, 30,040 extra. So the total, we had 42,960, add on 30,040, we've now got 73,000. So we're getting closer. In the fourth year, another 34,150. So we had 73. Add on 34,150. 107,150. So we've got there 
Uh, but again, assuming money is received evenly, uh, it's a little bit less than four years because we only needed a hundred. And so, what are we going to do? It's three years, and we've got seventy-three. And to get a hundred, well, a hundred minus seventy-three, we need an extra twenty-seven thousand. And the fourth year gave us 34,150. So if we assume it's spread evenly, um, it's going to be what fraction of the fourth year? 27,000 out of 34,150. Which is 0.79 which gives us 3.79 years. So exactly the same idea. Uh, I'd better say, in case anybody spotted it, that this actually, to say 3.79 is a bit dangerous, because when we discounted the fourth year, uh, we discounted for four years at 10%, which effectively assumed the 50,000 all came in at the end of the year. If it is spread evenly, then what we've done isn't quite right. And so you have to look at the choices of answers. What we certainly can say is it's within four years. Uh, because certainly by the end of four years, we've had a bit more than we need, 107,000. Um, if the choice of answers in the exam does have things like 3.79, then despite what I said, you will be expected to take uh, a proportion in the way I've done. OK, well, I hope that makes sense. Payback period, I think it's nice and straightforward. Uh, but... As always, do have a go at the online multiple choice test and see how you get on.